traditional method for treating sleep apnea generally involves positive pressure via mask, either CPAP or bi-level pressure via, via mask. And this is highly effective in the laboratory, and it's highly effective in people who accept and adhere to treatment. Nerve stimulation in, involves new technology, which is based on pacemaker uh, technology. When a patient activates the neurostimulator during the sleep period, the ventilatory uh, response is uh, synchronized with uh, the nerve output of the neurostimulator. And, and the result of that is that the tongue protrusion occurs, which tends to open the airway. And also what happens is there, there's coupling of upper airway muscles, so not only is the retrolingual airway impacted, but also the retropalatal airway in people who are successfully treated. We recently published a, a phase three trial in the New England Journal of Medicine. And what we found at 12 months was there was a significant improvement in both the apnea hypopnea index and the oxygen uh, desaturation index. These were very robust findings. The EPWR sleepiness scale measures tended to normalize and the functional outcomes of sleep questionnaire measures also normalized as well. An individual has to have tried CPAP and not been able to tolerate therapy because CPAP is highly effective, but unfortunately is not uh, a sustaining treatment for, for many individuals. And if a patient was intolerant of CPAP and they weren't significantly overweight, so the body mass index of 32 or less is, is an inclusion criteria. And if an individual had collapse that was concentric at the level of the retropalatal region by drug-induced sedation endoscopy, that was considered a negative predictive factor in terms of um, being successfully treated with upper airway stimulation. In properly selected patients, uh, upper airway stimulation can fill that niche and can really be transformative in terms of uh, their healthcare.